So I bought this uh, Econo line for four hundred dollars, thinking it just needed a timing gear. And I don't even know why I wasn't thinking. We checked over here. I mean, the engine was cranking and turning and turning, but it just wasn't wasn't trying to crank. So we took the cap off to see if the button was spinning was not spinning so we're like okay yeah uh, timing gear blah 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 all right luckily i only paid four hundred dollars for this big beater scrap probably probably only give me like five dollars for it now bullshit <clears throat> so i'm over here taking the radiator out so i can start getting to the timing chain then I noticed something strange. Do you see that? Ugh. Hold on, it's kind of. A freaking rod. I used the other F word last time, but. You can understand my pain. Oh, it's got my favorite Ford motor in it. I think I just snorted right there with my fat ass. So, favorite engine, straight six. All right. Luckily, I didn't get too far because either way, I think we're going to swap this motor. I find one for $400. Four hundred dollars, but I'm gonna have to uh, scrape up all my panties, dig in the couch, uh, clean the car out, uh, panhandle for like two days, um, ask for uh, after Christmas early birthday present, call five lifelines and all that shit. It's like nah, we ain't broke over here. I just got a bunch of stuff to sell. Uh, my favorite engine, Shree 6. With a beat ass motor. And you can tell that the motor, that everything was going good because the valve cover's been done, the oil pan, gaskets were done, even the timing gear has been done recently. So to get your air box off, it's gonna be this bolt. I think it was the 10 millimeter. It's gonna be one. My second one up here was missing. Then two more here. These four, this one, and this hose right here. Go to the top. Take those six bolts out, and then just pull it up and to the left. Radiator top right here. There's gonna be one down at the bottom with a clamp. Um, there also is two transmission cooler lines, I believe. Fan shroud top bolt. Then there's a bottom bolt down there, and then just it's gonna be the exact same on the opposite side. Okay. I'm still working on getting this radiator out because we we're gonna do the timing chain or timing gear, but figured out that that rod had a yeah motor no good. We can do a full rebuild or we can swap it. I don't know yet. I'm trying to go convenient because I just want this damn van on the road. Um, my favorite Ford engine, N line six. You can't kill it. This dude fucking killed it. So whatever, 300,000 miles on the odometer. It was a van for Tampa Bay's hip hop R&B, 95.7. Take care of your shit. Anyway, get this radiator out. Two cooler, fan, two cooler lines at the bottom. Uh, hose to the right with the clamp. V2. Uh, empty the radiator before you take it out down there you'll see there will be see right 
we'll change this one. Go. Be that little screw right there. And all you do is twist it. And the more you twist it, uh, the more it comes out, obviously. But you can bring it out the majority of the way and aim it straight down into your bucket. And then, obviously, take your cap off to let it breathe and empty itself out to ventilate through. All right, we'll be back soon. So that's the bottom radiator hose. Take a big ass vice grip or uh, whatever you get to get it all. Uh, these are the two transmission cooler lines that need to come out. Then there's another small hose over here, small clamp. Get that out. There's gonna be four, four bolts, two on each side. I'll show you in a second. But let me get these two loose real quick. Check this shit out. I'm in Florida, Melbourne, Florida. I'll hop under here real quick, sunny as shit. It's raining. It's gonna rain. But I'm pretty much doing this video for y'all because I didn't see no Econo line straight six engine swap. So let's get it. Sorry for the shakiness of the video. I normally keep my shit professional now, but I'm under here. One hand on this, other hand on the camera. Okay, there we go. Let that bitch hang. All right, so we got the whole bottom loose. Now we just need to get the ones at the front, bring it straight out. You're gonna wanna remove the front grill because these bolts are located. Looking at, looking at it. Oh. One right there, which I don't think is the damn, I don't think it's the damn OEM, cause that size. So, and that one, and yeah, that one, that looks OEM. And it looks like my buddy already took these out when we found out that it wasn't the time of year. Okay, so take those four out, it should come right up. And to take the grill off for me, it was just this bolt. I'm oh, sorry, screw, there screw. And that's screw, three screws, and it was like these little slots right here. These little slots were just kind of clicked in the clip. Okay, so we got everything off the radio except for these two more bolts I need to get out. So I got the radiator out, except that it was mounted with two of these funny ass brackets, so I had to take the four bolts that held it on or eight bolts, uh, four on each side, two at the top, two at the bottom, and same exact on the opposite side. So radiator's going. Radiator shroud foul, oh, uh, whoa, whoa. The radiator and fan shroud is out. Okay. So right now I'm gonna attempt, well, not attempt, I gotta do this shit. I'm about to, Take these screws out. And these two, just to get start getting the front end apart. Let's go. So I took the bezels off and the little plastic piece that goes here, right here. Um, it doesn't seem that you gotta take the lights out. You just have to unplug them from behind. See, here's a connector right here. Just wiggle and pull be careful all the trucks don't break nothing did the same to the other side see if you can get it down there yeah, you see it's a connector down here and plug so now 
guess I'm gonna have to take these side markers out. These little hex screws right here. I'm gonna get that out real quick. And then I guess the side markers will come out and then we'll be able to unbolt this big brace over here in the front. All right, let's go. So I want to take these turn signals off. And this damn hex screw, T15, stripped out. I managed to find something to fit it. But now it just spins, 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 and it just spins freely, it's stuck. I don't know what to do. Um, guess I'm just gonna leave it on there and try to get these bolts behind it. I'll show you on the other side. And this whole thing comes off whatever it took. There's a bolt here, a bolt there. See how this is coming off? It's gonna be a bolt here, same down there. This side, right here, down there, eight millimeter. Then a few more, and then there's two behind this light. I need to figure out how to get them out. I'm starting to get a little pissed, but just stay calm. That's when you start to break shit. If you end up having a problem with this ugly ass screw right here, that one right there, that ugly bitch, loosen the bottom one and wedge a little small ratchet in there, eight millimeter. Just get it out nice and slow. Don't break nothing. It all it should all come out. So after this little trick, shoving that ratchet in there, I got it out. And it just pops out. There goes the ugly puto right there. Next step would it be to get this little bar, bumper guard, whatever the fuck it is all. There's a few bolts right here. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go. So I got that part off. One quick tip when you take everything out, just throw those back into where they go so you don't lose them later. Now we're going to go ahead and work on getting this bumper off. To get the bumper off, there's going to be two bolts on each side on the back side. One on the top, one on the bottom. I'll show you this one. There's that one. Then there's that one. So looking pretty rusty. I'm gonna hit it with some. PB, sponsored by PV Blaster. Can I get a check, motherfucker? In my SpongeBob voice. Two hours later. Not really. It was like an hour. This bolt right here started spinning on the screw. Pissing me off. I tried wedging something in there so it wouldn't move. Didn't work. <clears throat> tried taking the four bolts off that are on the bumper guard or the bumper cover all three of them came out except for one because the fucking clip broke talk about a fucking headache excuse my language I was about to just throw a hammer through this bitch but from the top I just took that little Harbor Freight grinder in slow motion and cut that bitch off and the whole cover fell off and I was able to pull the plastic piece in between this screw and this nut, I put vice on the front <clears throat> and ratcheted it the way the rest of the way out. Fucking yay. Anyway, bumper off, whole front off. I guess next I'm gonna take these off and then the hood latch so I can take this crossbar, I don't know what it's called, take that off. And then, uh, I'm probably not going to do that now. I'm going to do the starter, so. I already got my little dude to take off the starter wires. So now I'm about to take this top starter bolt off. Right here. 
there should be another one on the bottom and that should just come out no problem and then I will start taking the bolts off to the flywheel so then we can unbolt in this transmission and disconnect everything else and just uh, it's a chore but just take your time don't get aggravated like me I was about to street fight the shit out of this van and how tight tight Luke and all this shit but yeah straight six my favorite engine just sucks that I bought it with a fucking rod hanging out of the bottom of the oil pan without even checking it luckily I only paid 400 for it so let's go And here's that bottom bolt to the starter. Awkward position. There's the bottom bolt to the starter. Right there. Ugly motherfucker. Awkward position. And it's a different size from the top. I think it might be a... I'm going to guess a... Not a 5 eighths, but a... Damage. What is this? 916. 916 is the one. Okay, catch me back on the fly. Two bolts, which I took the bottom one. <clears throat> it was one bolt on another screwing bolt because uh, the ground wire down there. So I took the one bolt off, took the wire off, took the bolt out. Bottom bolt of the starter, bottom screw, sorry. And then I uh, just put it back on the wire and used the other bolt to hold it there. So I won't lose it later. You see. Put it right there and then I put the top bolt back. A few threads in there so I don't lose it. And here's the ugly Samoa bitch. Right there. So I got that out. Uh, before I move to the front and start taking getting space to get this engine out uh i'm gonna take these i'm just i'm not even gonna take them out i'm just gonna loosen them because i want to get the bolts from the flywheel out i'm gonna get the ones from the flywheel out first so but we're making progress next step is just some plug a bunch of shit so we can just have smooth sailing when we take everything out uh, be back okay this piece is about to come off it took these two these two same on the opposite side then there was one on this side in here same on the opposite side and then there was two back here one and two but then you had to take two, these two off right here. And held this in place. Back part of the latch, hood latch. So one, two, one, two. And there was two up front that held the hood latch. <clears throat> take those out, that'll pop off. And then this should come off. No problem. Okay, let's go. That's off.
All right, that's my doggy right there. And this is my friend's 1996 Ford Econoline with a 4.9 liter inline six that we just installed. He actually put it in, I just did a little bit of the hookups. Um, the motor is um, 92, 94. Uh, for anybody that knows these engines, we did not use the 92 or 94 ECU. We have the 96 ECU in this truck. So that will cause a problem. Number one, the EGR valves are different. We had to change that piping. Um, O2 sensors, the front bank, you know, on both sides, one and two, are different. And there's another problem that will cause the engine to run idle really bad and load up really fast. And the problem is the crankshaft sensor. On these motors, the primary is not the crankshaft sensor, but it's the distributor. It runs off the camshaft. This is your signaling for the ECU, for the injectors, and for the ignition. It's in the distributor. So the engine will start and it will run on the 96 ECU. 96 was a bastard year and the only year that they used the crankshaft sensor. Well, I'm going to show you how we took the 92 motor without replacing the harmonic balancer, without replacing anything, and installed the crankshaft sensor to where it works. Now, if anybody looks online and sees with a 96 harmonic balancer looks like it doesn't have many teeth with the missing tooth like a you know so it's not causing an exact trigger for the engine it's a secondary device so basically it only has three teeth they're triangulated and it, it shows three teeth on there and it basically causes like I guess a notch wave for the computer just to tell it it's spinning you know and how fast so It'll show you what causes to make it run a whole lot better. This thing idled terrible and would load up really bad without it. So it had to have the crankshaft sensor. And this was our quick fix. That took three hours to do. Did this last night. Oh. Sorry about the shaking. There. All right, there's the new installed crankshaft sensor. As you can see, it's a two bolt crankshaft sensor and we kind of cheated and used a stud to space it outward to line up with my new signaling devices I made in the harmonic balancer. As long as you keep them somewhat even, it doesn't mess with the balance enough to cause any type of vibration or anything like that. But you do have to make sure you cap it correctly because if you don't, it causes a serious problem if they shoot out. But there's one of them. We just drilled and tapped three holes in the harmonic balancer. There's one. And then there's the other. There's a third, but you can't see it. But basically, you drill and tap about a half inch deep, three holes. Tap in the three eighths like we did, and run a three eighths bolt in there, and just cut it to length. And then you just get your crankshaft sensor within a about an eighth or sixteenth inch away from the the stud you just made, and uh, it works absolutely perfect. It idle smoothed right out the code went away on the ECU and she runs like brand new and the only thing I used to line it up it's not even that critical I used the notch which you can't see but there's a notch right here somewhere in this damper and I used the notch distance from there to where I drilled the hole and the rest I just triangulated off of that and it works perfectly so if you run into this problem, you don't have to buy a new damper. You don't have to even, you know, just, you need to pirate the, the 96 crankshaft sensor using the original 96 harness like we did. Um, but you're, you are gonna have to do that. And the only other problem we ran into on this particular swap, going from a 92 or 94 to a 96, 
was if you notice on this pipe up here, the 96 has O2 sensors, bank one and bank two, right off the exhaust manifolds. And this one, as you can see, doesn't have it. So we're gonna have to drill and tap a couple holes here to install the O2 sensors on the two pipes. But other than that, this crankshaft sensor was a biggie because this one right here would make it idle terrible. It, it would run, but it'd go whoop, 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 and it wouldn't idle worth a shit. And all we did was I eyeballed it, didn't even measure anything, just drilled three holes, tapped them, made sure I had the same amount of bolt thread in each hole, filling the holes that I did with metal so that way the balance wouldn't be far off. Just drilled them, ran a tap in there, cranked the bolt in as tight as I could until it locked, cut it clean, and I'm about to show you how good it runs. This one also removed all the air system off this car too. This doesn't have the EGR, doesn't have the air or anything that the, the 96 had air tubes in the head. We eliminated the entire air system because it's just a piece of crap. This blows air into the exhaust below the tailpipe emissions. And hell, it's Florida. We can make this thing a mosquito control truck. It won't even matter. Battery's about dead. It runs like a sewing machine. I haven't even seen it yet. This right here is also different. This is from... Uh, yeah, the 96 doesn't have the controller anymore. It tells the ECU doesn't know if this valve is on or not, which is nice. You can actually plug it. The computer doesn't know that the EGR is on. That, I think, is a 1996 feature, which is really good. The 94, 92 has a sensor right here to tell this if it's on or not to the computer. We also eliminated that. We don't need it because we're using the 96 ECU with the earlier engine. And let me tell you what, I haven't even set the vacuums up. I haven't set anything on this motor and it's running way, way nicer. It doesn't even have the O2 sensors, aren't even installed yet. As you can see, I got an O2 sensor shoved in a vacuum back there to plug it. It is amazing how that crankshaft sensor picks up problems. Drilling and tapping three bolts and mounting it to the bolt that was already there. We didn't even have to make a bracket. It took about two, three hours to do it. I'm up on this. I gotta time it. I change the vacuum, but if you're doing the same swap, I hope that helps. See ya.